I actually want to bring this up. Look at this. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, it gets, like I say, it gets all rainy. It's just like, ugh, what is happening? Um, let's see if I can take this and share this. Uh, let's copy the link. Let me get this over so we can take a look at this. All right, so today we're going to be talking about, um, I mean, just mixing, which kind of is like a super general statement. Um, I mean, there's... Once again, as with all of this stuff in audio, there's a bajillion different things um, that you can do in mixing. So I really want to focus on more of like, like, why do we mix stuff? Why does music need to be mixed? Um, um, so what I want to actually start with is I want to get up for us here. Let me send this to myself. Um, Is I want to go over what we consider like our Ten Commandments of audio engineering because this actually guides a lot of when you're when you're mixing music when you're thinking about music um, especially when you're working on somebody else's music um, kind of what what that um, what that actually uh, what that actually entails. Um, so let me ask you this, like just kind of go around the room. You know, we're still waiting on people, but why do we mix music? Like what, like what, what's, what's the point of mixing music? Like why, why do we do it? What are we, what are we trying to achieve? Okay. Sound editing. Okay. Um, I mean, those are all, those are all technical things. Um, um, I mean, like why, I mean, at the end of the day, why, um, like who, who are we mixing music for? Listeners. Listeners, the end users, the consumers, you know, um, like that's, um, you know, the way that we think about it is um, the same way that, you know, like Apple has a, uh, you know, Apple has a, um, you know, they they have their consumers in their ecosystem. Well, when you're mixing music for an artist, they're trying to have listeners consume that music. Right. So you're trying to make sure that what they're working on is the most digestible form. Um you know, which would probably be the, um, I guess the the best way that I would uh, that I would put it. So, anyway, so I kind of put up here. So, so when we talk about working on, especially other people's music, okay, um, we have here what we call our ten commandments <laughs> for successful audio engineers. Number one, and this is the big one: do no harm. You always should be stopping and evaluating if what you're doing is helping or hurting. Okay. One of the easiest ways to do that, and we're going to do this a lot here when we start working on a track, is you you need to make sure that you're matching how loud things are. If you turn an EQ up and boost stuff, you better trim that EQ plugin back down a little bit, and then that way you can bypass it, and it's about the same level, and you can actually judge if you're hurting or helping. It's really easy to do stuff and just add stuff and make it louder, but you're actually doing harm, okay? Um, 90% of what you should be doing in mixing is subtracting or removing, okay? Um, and that really minimizes the risk of doing harm, okay? Um, number two, if it sounds good, it is good. And this kind of goes into the do no harm idea as well. If you're listening to something, you're like, well, I think that sounds good. Then don't touch it, you know? Only touch it or do something if you actually have a reason to. Don't just be like, well, I have a plugin on this, and I just put this plugin on everything, so I'm just going to do it. No, if it sounds good, it's good. Leave it. Yeah. Now, maybe there is a problem there, and maybe you aren't experienced enough to understand what the problem is or why something doesn't work. That's fine. Experiment, but understand that you will probably do more harm if you just start messing with it, as opposed to if you just left it um, alone in the first place. Um, when training uh, young engineers, almost always they start doing mixes, <laughs> go in and sit down with them. We're like, okay, cool. 
I'm going to just take off everything that you did here, and then let's listen to it. Hey, this sounds like a much better mix now, <laughs> you know, because it's just doing too much, okay? So be honest with yourself. If it sounds good, leave it. Um, other th Next thing, always in tune, always in time, okay? Um, I know that there is a, there's a big push back in the world, especially with singers against, you know, I can't auto-tune, I can't, or anything. No, it needs to be in tune, it needs to be on time. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of a gray area around it. Hey, it's all going. Come on in. Good today. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, so, so music should always be in tune and it should always be in time. Okay. Um, that that is a rule that like if you break it, you better have a damn good reason for breaking it. But always in tune, always in time. Um, this goes directly to when you're mixing. Um, pitch affects. The frequency response of what you're working on so if I have a song that's in this key and so I have you know my frequency responses are here and someone's a little sharp their frequency response is just off here and now it conflicts and my mix sounds bad because the person wasn't singing the key of the song okay when things are in tune and in time the song mixes itself okay so many problems that people spend all this time dealing with are because the kicks and snares aren't perfectly lined up, or the 808 and the kick are hitting at weird times, you're getting like a thwah, and you're killing all the clarity of it. Like these things happen all the time, and you don't need plugins or EQs or compressors to fix them. You just gotta move stuff, you know, just to make sure that they're on time, okay? Um, so, next, and this is really important, is when you're working on something, okay? Saying something's good enough, that's the enemy of perfection. Everyone's like, I want perfection, right? At the same time, perfection is the enemy of deadlines. You're getting anything done, okay? If you're working on your own music and you never want to release it, and then you're just making it for you, that's fine. The vast majority of people that work on music are doing it because they want to share it with people. If it's always being worked on, you never share it, you have missed the goal and the point of your project. If you spend a year mixing a project, at some point, you should have just put it out and let people listen to it take what you learned and apply it to the next time that you work on something. That's how you grow. Um, the idea of just consistently working on the same thing over and over actually stunts your growth and teaches you bad habits. Okay? So good enough is the enemy of perfection. Perfection is the enemy of deadlines. Okay? Um, number five, also a really important one. Let go of your ego. Okay? Um, we, work, we work in music. We work with artists. We work with creatives. Everybody has an opinion. People, some people are going to love your opinions. Some people are going to hate your opinions. It's going to make you angry. That's okay. Because if you're angry about something, that means you care. You care about the project that you're working on. Accept that. That's okay. If the artist has a strong opinion back against it, it's because they care. Let go of your ego. Just because someone doesn't like an idea of yours doesn't mean that they hate you or don't like you. Hopefully. Okay? In general, people are able to separate the two because you're working towards the same goal. Okay? If an artist overrides you on something, it's like, no, 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 like, this is really the way that I want it. And you're just like, no, you don't. You really want it this way. At a certain point, it's not your project. Let go of your ego. Okay? The number of times, number of artists I've worked with have been like, I can't believe that we're doing this. What is happening? And then it's getting all these streams or things. Like, it happens all the time. Okay? So I still trust my gut. And it's still right 90% of the time. But I've also been wrong enough times. And I mean, yeah, there's stuff that's out. I'm like, I have no idea why this is popular, why people really like this. But you know what? It doesn't matter because it's their project, and I'm glad that I was able to help serve and facilitate their vision. Okay? So that's me letting go of my ego, which is really tough. On a daily basis, I still try to remember that one. Um, okay. Ari kind of touched on this. Mixing is an art of reduction. Okay? We have performances. We need to identify the things that we like about them. And then we just have to get rid of the stuff that gets in the way. Okay? People think it's like, oh, I need to enhance their performance, or I need to make the song do this. The song's pretty much going to do that or not, okay? Get rid of the stuff that gets in the way of the performance, okay? Um, let the performances and what's there speak for itself as much as possible. That's how you emphasize something, is by taking away the stuff that gets in the way, okay? Um, part of it, um, identify what's important and stick to it, okay? So... When you listen to something, a song, identify what the what is the core of that. What is what makes it work? And then make sure that's what cuts through and in your final mix. Even if you have to write down notes and be like, this is what I like about this. By the time you hit the end of it, those things should still be what fires through. Okay? Um, 
Um, and this is just for people for people that make money doing this. No session can start late because of the engineer. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. Artists will be late. Absolutely. You, the engineer, cannot be late. Your, your equipment works because you checked it out ahead of time. Like, that's, that's how you work with people. Okay? Like, that's just... That's something for for engineers here. Like that's that's just that's an unacceptable um, unacceptable. If you're if you're a professional or present yourself as a professional, you act professionally by being on time. Um, okay, next one thing a lot of people skip over: have a self care regimen. If you work on music a bunch, you're probably working long hours. You may not be eating the best food. You may not be getting, adhering to the best sleep schedule. Amen. If you are burned out. <laughs> okay well okay so i mean maybe that was emotional self-care but you know at a certain point you know maybe maybe hit the gym maybe maybe do some running maybe do some push-ups between sessions um maybe don't stick to a pure regimen of coffee during the day you know um like actually a lot of the engineers here um actually uh for their meals uh drink stuff called soylent complete meal in a bottle. It's not like insure anything. It's like full nutrition. You can just live on this stuff. Really cool. Mm. But it mixes great with coffee. So a lot of times they'll, they're in session, you know, for, you know, eight, you know, eight to 10 hours a day and, you know, and have breaks here or there and where they have to wolf down food and they don't want to have to do that. So they just have their food there and they're just kind of drinking it as they go through the day and it's super healthy and they feel better. Um, it's really important. Taking downtime is really important. Even if you're super obsessed with the project, sometimes you need to step away from it take time for you, recharge, do something else. When you come back to it, you'll probably be better at the music, okay? So self-care is really important. That also goes for your ears. If you're going to shows, earplugs. You can't, you can't do that to your ears. Um, okay, and then last one, music, it's data. Back it up. If you don't have three copies of your music, of your data, you don't have it, okay? And I... I will fight anybody that says differently, okay? I have absolutely lost primary and backups within 24 to 48 hours of each other, and, man, we had that third backup system. Absolutely. Like, if you don't have three copies of your data, you might as well assume that you don't have it, okay? Um, talk to more people that have issues with data nowadays. Get yourself a cloud solution for your data. Um, we highly recommend Box.com. Not Dropbox. Box.com. Com. Um, they're really good. Um, anyways, so these, so this is our our ten commandments of uh, of audio engineering. These are kind of the guiding principles that guide us in the work that we do in the engineers here. So, um, so that kind of frames how we approach working on audio, music, mixing. Okay. Um, I know a lot of people look at this and they're like, oh, well, I just need that plugin or I just need that plugin setting to be able to do this right. Um, and I absolutely vehemently disagree with that approach, okay? Um, the best tool for a job is the tool that you have available, okay? Um, at the end of the day, the end listener, and for the most part, it's the artist, they don't care what you use. They just care about the result. Um, we are working in a business of being almost 100% result oriented, okay? I don't care if an artist needs to be standing on their head and have to put the mic upside down towards the ground. If that gets them the performance, we're doing it. Um, so, yeah, it ends justify the means. So, um, anyway, so without further ado, I want to I wanna start by diving into, um, we'll see kind of what progress we make, but let's start by diving <coughs> into probably a uh, a song that might more typify a lot of the music or issues that we come into contact with uh, most people here come into contact with um, so um, this is a um, this is a uh, 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 it's genres are so tough um, um, to, to define nowadays so anyways, so okay so we just pulled up this session we can see it's organized we have a beat this is a two-track beat, so a stereo mix beat, non-tracked out. Um, let's see, we've got a hook. We've got this is labeled as a bridge. Not really sure why. Um, <laughs> bridges normally go once over here, but okay. Reverb track. We've got a verse. Uh, looks like we had breath separated out. So basically, this is a session that's been edited. Yeah. Okay, which is cool. So this has basically been set up for us. So, what's the first thing we do? We have a song. We have a song that we're gonna mix. What's the 
First thing we do to the song. Listen to it. Okay. You know how many people miss that and they just start soloing stuff? Listen to the song. And when we listen to the song, you're going to first be drawn to the things that you don't like. That's important. That's really easy. But what I want everybody here to do is think about the things that you do like. What are the things that sh we should focus on and try to make sure it translate in the song? Um, so um, all the all the faders right now are just kind of zeroed. So um, I'm just going to... Uh, yeah, let's just hit our all group and tap all these down down a touch so I'll kind of jimmy with the uh, levels as we uh, as we get going here um, we can kind of hear everything um, right now there's no compressors or EQs on anything so I mean this is just this is raw 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 so um, so we're just gonna kind of we're just gonna listen through the song okay all right here we go He got the wheel, I got the cheese yeah. I do it right so that no one can see oh. What's in my bag, you're running from police I keep it still like it's in custody Off of the paper, picking money trees yeah. I am the water, music is the sea They on the ass, so we take up the speed We running lights, hope you use the safety I go nowhere when I got a charge Solar, I'm a space kid Your mama's mama, watch me as I'm floating Giving knowledge, if you know it Please just follow, don't lose focus They gon' chase us till we dead and gone You know my life is floating, yeah, you know Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go Lie the people with me, keep the real ones on the toes If you don't like me, I'm not pressure, keep the fake shit on the road Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go Lie the people with me, keep the real ones oh, My bad, it's not important, maybe sure I'm about to blow so we have the same bridge comes in right there. Um, all right, let's skip into the second bridge. Dennis the Menace, I'm smoking on that dog. It's oh, dope. My flow be clean like soap. Like oh. soap. If you feeling froggy, then go ahead and crawl. Oh. Ribbit. Drown in my way, but learn how to flow. Burn. I keep it wet like I flip the boat. Ribbit. All this grass, you know I'm the goat. Two hands on your throat, cause this make your toe. Yeah. I'ma teach the game, you just take notes. All white, like, like the, the pole. pole. Then the drip tie out, cause it's hippie dope. You know this hippie is trippy. I'm, I'm on my toes, yeah, them tippies. Tippy. You, you know I'm stuck off the stick. That stick. My Mary Jane stay pretty. My Mary Jane stay pretty. So there's verse two, and then we have the same hook. Let's go listen to the first trace. Thanks. I'm trying not to kill the nigga, but if they push me to the edge, I might spill a nigga. Spill a nigga. Hey, if I said it, then I meant it, nigga. Meant it, nigga. I'm not sugar coated shit. This ain't sweet, nigga. It's not sweet. Nigga. Hey. Okay. <laughs> All right. So then we have the hook out. I'm assuming that right here, there's probably some sort of beat filter or something like that that oh, yeah. happened on that track. It's probably why I was on there's some sort of effect or something like that is supposed to happen there. Okay. So, all right. So, <laughs> llamas and notwithstanding. Um, uh, so, all right. So, so, uh, so, song, talk, thoughts. Thoughts, things like uh, what are what are what are some of the the first things that stand out, good or bad? Just kind of like what I like are the, all the stuttering. Like, <laughs> well, as a, as I listen to that, the stuttering sounds sounds to me like it sounds to me like that verse was freestyled. 
<laughs> and it sounds yeah. and it sounds like the person that edited like they put in those chops to fill up these awkward pauses. Pauses, yeah. Um, but at the same time, there's something, there's an awkwardness that's kind of to that verse that I'm like, it kind of works. Yeah. You know, yeah. like I'm like, it's kind of, it's kind of, yeah, it's it's it's, it, it's kind of cool. You know, um, like you get the songs about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, okay, so um, um, so okay, so like uh, so let's talk um, the hook. Um, let's talk. Yeah. Let's talk the female. So let's let's start. Let's talk the hook. What um? Because the hook listeners gonna hear just, three times in the song. So right. so what's what's the core of the hook? What what do we what do we think can be improved and focused and tightened in it? It's a reverb. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> I mean, because it's only it's only just main vocals right there. Is no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like no, that's kind of hard. So you gotta kind of and like maybe mm-hmm. have just one row and then the other one have stuff. I mean, we can, we can, yeah, we can, you know, you can do a wet dry and put and put and kind of drip in effects. Yeah. The the. Oh, hmm? uh, did, is there feelings on dope? The word dope. Uh, I don't. Oh, is it layered? Uh, nope. Yeah, I was gonna say we could definitely. Well, we can't really. We could like if we double. Um, I think if we double something, it all it all that really does is just makes yeah. it twice as loud. Yeah. We could put a chorus or something on. Like, there's yeah, definitely yeah, stuff we can like do. Drop, drop, maybe drop it like a uh, yeah, and do do a screw, <laughs> female screw. Oh uh, yeah, we might be able to do something cool I like that. So. Um, okay, so this is good. The thing is, as we're listening to that, everybody right now is is addressing the the feel of the song. And yeah. I think that's and I think that's important. Um, Things that stand out to me most in all of this right now is um, the fact that um, she's still a little pitchy. Yeah. She's sliding oh, yeah, into her course. notes, yeah. um, and also um, as- on her, especially on her verse, um, her consonant range is just not consistent. Yeah. I can't consistently hear what she's saying. Yeah. Okay, now granted, this hasn't been compressed. That'll all definitely right. help, yeah. but. Um, but still, we're just listening to the raw performances and identifying what we do. I don't want to just start throwing compressors on stuff until I know what I'm trying to achieve right. with them. Okay. So, um, okay. So we've got that. Um, I think the, the the verse, her verse, has has some ad libs and stuff in it, so that's cool. So we got stuff we can use there and get All some right. space. But really, we gotta we gotta the the hook needs the vibe yeah. better. It's kind of it's kind of the overall thing that I'm hearing. Okay. Um, and so they did kind of a cool preverb effect on like um, what's tagged as the bridge. I, I don't know. I, I guess that's I, I guess maybe that's a bridge or pre-chorus. It's like a pre-verse. Thing. I don't know. It happens twice. Cool. Um, I kind of get the thing that with uh, with preverb, I kind of think that maybe that should feel a little um, a little swimmier. Yeah. Like you know, we do something like that. Um, maybe when the bridge comes back on the other side, maybe we do a beat filter there, you know, or something like that. Yeah. That way, that that way, um, I Some felt. Transitions. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say I feel like coming out of like this bridge into um into the second verse. Because the, the beat didn't like super change right there. Yeah. I think maybe we do like a filter or something there. Then we can make the energy pop back up into that second verse. Because we always want to have something change at like those big transition points. Yeah. Um, because when listening to it, I'm like, wait, is this still... I'm like, I heard this part earlier. Is that part of the hook? Or now it's happening after? Right. Like, what is this? So I think it that part, the bridge part, needs to kind of have its own sound texture feel to it. Um, okay. Um... Okay, so we talked a bit about the third verse. Uh, I need uh, to yeah, do some. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna figure <laughs> something out there. Um, uh, and then the second verse. I'm smoking on that dog. It's oh, my flow be clean like salt. Like so. If you feeling froggy, then go ahead and crawl. Ribbit, drown in my way. But- <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I mean that one's that that verse is much more like kind of call and response. Um, mm. So I feel like that verse is, is a bit more is a bit more straightforward. Um, so, yeah. okay, there's there's one other thing that's going on in all of this that's actually going to make mixing this kind of a pain in the ass and a little tough. Anybody know what it is? Uh, the fact that dynamics. it's a two-track beat and the bass is... It's, a, it's a two-track beat. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the two-track yeah, yeah. beat yeah. is, has... Like this is what we call a shredded. Yeah, we say that something shredded. It it's just been. I mean, granted, by the time you finish stuff, normally you want to have it like you know really loud. Yeah, but this is beat. gonna be a little <laughs> too loud yeah. um, for right now. Um, so let's. Um, where did you go? Where did you go? 
Um, so let's um, let's take a look at that for starters, okay? Because we need to actually open up a lot of space. So we're going to basically work entirely or as much as we can today just within Neutron 2s. Just channel strip. These are so freaking powerful. We can do just about anything we need to with them. So let's solo up this beat and let's just kind of check it out um, and just kind of see what's happening frequency response and dynamics wise. So the thing is, is we'd actually, we don't have any huge gaps in frequency response. I mean, the bass actually is up. It's still as punch. It's loud as hell. Like, yeah. like that, that's actually pretty cool. Um, we're going to start having some issues right in this range here, especially 400 to 1K, because we gotta, we got to make space for our, um, yeah, for our vocals. <clears throat> um, also, we probably want our S's to be cresting a bit. From these vocals and the hi hats and stuff might need to we might need to kind of do like a gentle presence boost. We don't want to boost up and make it too nasty at the top because listening to this, this is an MP3, so it doesn't have great response up at the top. Um, so see this fall off right here? That's and it kind of sounds chirpy up there. That's an MP3. You can hear that distortion up there. Mm. Um, so, all right. I mean, and that's one of the reasons that I wanted to kind of take a look at this one because this is pretty typical if someone comes in and is like, hey, I'm just going to drop some vocals on this MP3 or this mm -hmm. thing that I got off YouTube. I mean, YouTube actually mm -hmm. is even worse. So, <laughs> yeah. um, all right. So, so I guess let's start by um, let's start by taking a look at our hook. Um, we can go in and just start tuning it. Typically, I like to get stuff just sitting a little bit more um, just in the mix before I tune it, even if it's not like final, final. So I want to take a look at um, at the um, at the hook here. Okay? And just so I don't hear another vocal and which tweaks my ear, I'm just going to mute everything else so I don't accidentally hear anything else. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my spectrum. I'm going to take it out of real time. I'll put it up to five seconds at least three seconds um, because otherwise those peaks that you see flying they don't really tell you the whole story um, so yeah let's just kind of take a look a little bit more in depth at this vocal here from her smoking on my dope smoking smoking on my dope I'll be in your city you can see how fast I go lot of people with me keep the real ones on the toes if you don't like me I'm not pressure keep the fake shit on the phone smoking on my dope smoking smoking on my dope Okay, so we hear that we have a whistling S, yep. but those are really tough to, to take care of. We also probably need just a general presence boost up here, probably, yeah. like, all the way, I would, pro and here's the thing, when, when doing this, when working with especially any, um, and this goes for everything, but especially anything that's acoustic, like an actual real instrument, like a vocal, Please try to use as wide of moves as you can. You may end up having to go surgical on some stuff. Maybe we have to go surgical on the S, but right now we need a general presence boost from her. So let's actually take, so let's actually do something like this. Let's see, like two decibels. Let's see what that is. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Lot of people with me, keep the real ones on the toes. If you don't like me, I'm not pressure. Okay. So now she's holding a little bit more consistent. Um, I want to see if we can actually start doing a little bit of compression. Um, I'm not sure if we want to compress before or after EQ. I'm going to start after for right now. Um, um, she's she's actually, you know, if you both look at the waveform and you listen yeah. to it, you can hear that actually the, the chest of her vocal, like, you know, the bottom part, um, which to show you visually what I'm talking about would be... Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. That's actually holding pretty consistent, okay? So, so before I go in and just slam this with a compressor, what am I actually looking to do in evening out our dynamics? Because your dynamics are fairly even. Mm -hmm. I, what I'm really looking to do <clears throat> is I want to pull forward our consonants. Um, 
Um, when a lot of people think clarity, they start thinking up in this range, like above like 4,000 hertz. And that's uh, that definitely helps. It's definitely part of it. Um, but that's, that's a way to end up with really spittily small sounding tracks. People's consonants actually gonna be around 4K. Um, then we got a couple different ways we can do this. For starters, um, I'm going to come over here to my compressor. Um, and what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to side chain an EQ into my compressor. Okay. So I don't want to listen in too much to the bottom. I want it to listen a little bit more to like this range up here. Okay. Um, so what this is, um, for people that weren't watching or here last week, um, is this is an EQ that is fed um, into the signal that's going to the compressor that the compressor uses to decide when to act on the original signal. <laughs> so it's why we call it a side chain. It's like we took the vocal, we copied one, we EQ'd one, and the compressor listens to that one to decide when to work, but it works on the original vocal stuff. So I'll give you an idea. Let's actually just put this in practice here. Um, so let's take a look at this. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Lot of people with me, keep the real ones on the toes. If you don't like me, I'm not pressure, keep the fake shit on the floor. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. Okay, so let's actually listen to what the compressor is listening to here. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Lot of people with me, keep the real ones on the toes. So you can hear that I'm really kind of emphasizing, you're like, yeah, it's kind of a mid range EQ. Well, I'm focusing on what she's kind of lacking, Lagging. right? Yeah. So I don't want to hear that, but the thing is, that's what the compressor is listening to, to decide when to compress. So. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Lot of people with me, keep the real ones on the toes. If you don't like me, I'm not pressure, keep the fake shit on the floor. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. You can actually hear that her voice sounds a bit more even, right. and it's a bit even, a little, a little like higher, but at the same time, she just seems more forward and consistent. Um, but she doesn't sound small or spittily or anything like that. Like we didn't start to over compress her. And for the record, I'm using a compressor with a two to one ratio. I see. Seven millisecond, hundred millisecond attack. I can put an automatic release in this so it'll be a little bit more intelligent. Actually, I should probably do that. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Lot of people with me, keep the real ones on the toes. If you don't like me, I'm not. Like right here. Lot of people with me, keep the real ones on the toes. If like it just just sounds a little bit more even, okay? And so that's what we're looking to achieve in this case is don't think of it as just the overall level or just look at a meter and be like, oh, it has to be at this point on the meter. Use yours. What frequency range do we want to try to make sure it kind of stays there? And a lot of times it's going to be the clarity or it's going to be the bottom of the voice, but listen to what you think is moving too much and then try to focus on that when you start using your dynamics. Now, we could absolutely go into this and start using a multi-band compressor and dynamic EQ and all this crazy stuff. Or we could just use a compressor with a two to one ratio to kind of lock her in. Okay. Now that's that right there is, is a good starting point. Okay. Just to be honest with you for, if we're going for max volume and level and like power in the end, we probably need to juice this up a little bit. Okay. But right now I have, I'm coming out of what I consider the corrective stage of mixing. Yeah. And now I can be like, well, what, how do I want to shape this for feel? How do I want to take what I think she was right. trying to do and push it forward? Okay? <clears throat> so I now feel like I've taken care of the things that I don't like. I want to get that out of the way so I can focus on, on the things that I do like. Okay. So for starters, I want to actually figure out how I want to, how I want to tune. So to, let's start with just, let's try with some real time pitch correction and see what happens. Let's see if we can figure out what key this is in. Let's see if we're going to find a root note. All right, 
So this basically goes between dun dun dun. <laughs> so let's find what key that is. Well, if you don't have a keyboard and you have Pro Tools, you can load up Mini Grand. That works great. Mm -hmm. Music theory is nice to know, by the way. If you don't know circle, fifth, stuff like that, read. It's pretty easy. So let's start. Let's start with this and see where we're at. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Glad the people with me, keep the real ones on the toes. If you don't like me, I'm not pressure. Keep the fake shit on the phone. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go Lie to people with me, keep the real ones on the toes If you don't like me, I'm not pressure, keep the fake shit on the phone okay. So, in trying to use, you know, I was able to get it where it sounded Where it sounded pretty clean, where it was picking up her pitch and kind of correcting stuff But some of the bottom notes, um, she wasn't fully getting down to still um, and then also some of her vibrato is very yeah. wide, so she holds a note or she lands on a note, it kind of <clears throat> and jumps between them. Right. So I I don't want to hear that. I want this personally, me listening to this, I want this to be a little bit more like pop clean. So um, so we're gonna go in. Um, we use Waves Tune for our hand tuning here. Um, just I like the workflow in it. Um, so I tell it that we're in F minor. Cool. And so the way this works is I'm going to play the audio through it so it can analyze it. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Lie to people with me, keep the real ones on the toes. If you don't like me, I'm not pressure, keep the fake shit on the phone. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Lie to people with me, keep the real ones on the toes. If you don't like me, I'm not pressure, keep the fake shit on the phone. So as we do this, I mean, I'm listening to it. I do like the bouncy, whimsical nature of it, and I want to mm -hmm. make sure that we don't roboticize it. Okay, so that's going to be really, really important. So I'm going to start with this is just very, very gentle correction. Um, Smoking on my dogs. Smoke. Okay, so right off the bat, we can hear. Mm -hmm. Is that she really shouldn't be sliding? She's going smoke. We probably don't want to do that. We probably want to try to get this up a little fast. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. Okay, so we heard that little uh, oh, yeah. on the vibrato. Let's just pull it down. Once again, we can see it's not like locking it to the note. To give to give you an idea, when we're looking at hand tuning, when when you just like crush something in auto tune, what that looks like on this screen is like this. See, all these lines just went perfectly flat. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. Okay, that's that's what that visually looks like. So having these little bits of waggles in here, like this, we're allowing her to still maintain her kind of internal pitch, but we're just kind of tightening it all. Okay, it's kind of like if you had a camera that's a little bit out of focus, and we just kind of just focus it a little bit, you know, run a nice sharpen filter on it. Um, uh, that's a joke. Sharpen filters. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ooh, okay, so now the thing is, as we tune, these little things start to stand out a lot more. Uh, so we either need to tighten up the step transition. So I don't know if we want her to go, I'll be in your city, or we want her just to go, I'll, and just land on it. One might sound, this might sound less natural. It's fine. Alright. I kind of think that's what she meant to do, but maybe that was a little too tough, so let's give her back just a little bit of the slide. You can see how fast I go. Lie to people with me, keep the. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Let's pull it by Brian. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. These bottom notes right here, it bugs me that she's a little bit below, so I'm just going to tighten these just a little bit. See how fast I go. Lie to 
people with me keep the real ones on the toes if you don't like me i'm we shouldn't be going down to there. And you can see that if I was doing this by just what I'm looking at here, I'd be like, oh, all these notes have to come up. And in some cases, you want to do that. But right now, I'm just really trying to listen by what I'm hearing. What are the things that are bugging me as I'm going through? <clears throat> taking care of that. Because once again, I want to try to make sure that I'm touching this as lightly as possible right now. Okay. Um, because if you do this, you'll find the artist will stop fighting you when you're like, hey, I want to tighten up your pitch. So they're like, oh, you take time to do it. And I don't sound like a singing robot afterwards. Me keep the real ones on the toes If you don't like me, I'm not pressure Keep the fake shit on the road Smoking on my dough Smoking, smoking on my dough I'll be in your city You can see how fast I go Okay, right there, I'll be I think I was wrong Smoking, smoking on my dough I'll be in your city You can see how fast Okay, so right there I'll be in your city I'll be Or should it be I'll be We should be there. Walking on my door. I'll be in your city. Walking on my door. I'll be in your city. Yeah, so I think she actually sang this note, but it should have been that note. We need to let her slide back down fast. Walking on my door. I'll be in your city. You can see how fast I go. Lie to people with me. Keep the real ones on the toes. If you don't like me, I'm not pressure. Keep the fake shit on the road. Do you can see how fast I go? Lie to people with me, keep the real ones on the toes. If you don't like me, I'm not pressure. Keep the fake shit on the road. Alright, so from where we went, now we're gonna do a reality check. We're gonna bypass this. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. Right, this first phrase here right here still sounds a little unnatural to me. I like that at the pitch accuracy, but um Okay. I'd say, I don't know. The more the more that you train and compose and use pitch, the mm -hmm. bigger of a difference that you'll hear in that. To me, that's a night and day difference. Here's why that's really, really important. <clears throat> Each of these notes corresponds to a frequency. Okay. So when she's singing, and this is really important for singers. So when she's singing a note, let's say that note. Let's say like she's saying dun. That's actually we can probably see where that note is. Smoking up. Smoke. Okay, so it's right here, about 360 hertz, 370 hertz. Okay, so if every time she hits that note, she's the same, and I put an EQ on her voice, that EQ is gonna work pretty consistently. Right. But what happens when she's slightly Ooh, sharp or slightly flat? She's moving around, and then my EQ doesn't work as well all the time. So just by a vocalist being tuned, that makes them more consistent in their pitch. So notice, before I did the tuning, I evened out a little bit of, the, of her clarity because I wanted to be able to hear a little bit more detail on her voice because when I tuned it, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't doing harm, okay? That's the reason why I went in this order, okay? If, if I listened to the vocal and I was like, hey, like she's got great clarity and everything, I don't, like, I don't need to have any like corrective stuff I need to do right now, then I would have just tuned it. But there are some things I needed to do because I know that would affect the way that I did my next task, which was cleaning up her pitch. Now that our pitch is cleaned up, now we can do the getting into the feel stuff that we were talking about before. But if we just went right to putting reverb on her and effects and doing all of this stuff, we'd just be covering up these problems that existed. And now when we do them, we're going to make better decisions with the effects because she's more consistent. And so when we listen through, we're not going to be like, oh, is it, well, it works here, but not here. I wonder why, why this sounds good here, but it doesn't sound good here. Because the performer isn't as consistent. When she's consistent all the way through, you put an effect or an EQ on, it should just stick. If you find yourself constantly going back and forth with something, 
that is indicative that there is another problem happening. There is an underlying issue that, and sometimes you may be like, man, I know there's an underlying issue and I literally don't have time. So, you know, we're going to band-aid this and move on. But, but you do need to remember, and hopefully when there is time, go back, take a look at it, and diagnose the problem. Even if you aren't able to do it on the clock for someone or they had a deadline, this had to get out, sure, but go back and take a look afterwards because that's how you learn and that's how you grow. Okay. So, all right. So now we're through that. Um, now we've got, we've got some tuning in there. Um, next thing I'm going to do after I've hand-tuned this, because, you know, so I had to play it in, I don't want to have to do that for each of these other hooks. Whenever you hand tune stuff, the first thing you do is you print it. Okay, really, if you're using any type of tuning, you should probably be printing it every time. Even auto tune, waves, uh, waves tune, like real time, any of that, it's a real time process. It's making decisions. It's not necessarily going to make the same decision every time. If I have a large session and, and there's going to be a lot of mix revisions and going back and forth, I just want to print the auto tune because I want it to be the same every time. I don't know if it's everyone that's ever had it happen where you deliver something or you kick something out to somebody, you go to listen to it, and you're like, wow, autotune just freaked out and made me sound like a duck there, or, so, or something like that happens. Like, it happens because it's, it's software and it's running in real time, right. so technically it does it just a little different every time, okay? So, um, so if you have tuning, print it. Um, in this case also, because I would literally have to go play it in at that part in the song, so we'd be like over here, and then I would have to do the exact same thing not only a waste of time, but I want the I want all the hooks to sound the same. So in Pro Tools, I'm yeah, going yeah. to right click on Waves 2 I'm going to hit Commit up to this insert. Edit selection on track. Um, source track. Eh, let's just tell it to just make it next. Put it next to it. Real quick, it just prints it. Gives me a new track. All put together, but see, it keeps these same plugins on, which is kind of cool. You know, you notice I still have the auto tune here and I haven't like gotten rid of it. And that's because there is kind of a sound to auto tune and even for pop vocals. Maybe we want to put a little bit of that on. Hopefully auto tune won't be freaking out as much now. Um, I don't know. So let's find out. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Got the people with me, keep the real ones on the toes. If you don't like me, I'm not pressure, keep the fake shit on the phone. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. I don't know. Uh, personally, I don't think we're really going to want to push for that much of an edge, so I'm going to turn this off for right now. Um, kind of like rock. Okay, so now let's actually let's actually kind of. Oh, so you heard how uh, you heard how dark and how much more bass. That was because that EQ yeah. boost right there, which was on the root note that she was hitting. Um, <laughs> just that one little boost. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. Okay, so all right, so now we're actually gonna go actually start making a little bit of like some actual like lasting EQ decisions here. Um, I figure out where my mix window went. Get down here. There you are. What are you doing down there? There we go. Sweet. Um, okay. This is when pulling up your metering and making sure that what you're listening to is calibrated. So the tonal balance control comes with comes with Neutron 2 Advanced and Ozone 8 Advanced. Amazing thing. It doesn't matter how loud your music is, looks at the, at the overall balance. Um, you can create your own curves for it, but really, this bass heavy one that it comes with is pretty much spot on. Um, okay, so we can definitely, like her S's are definitely hidden, and we can definitely, like we see visual confirmation of what we've been hearing is that the beat's a little dark up there, things like that, okay? So, before I start going and just start EQing her voice all bright, let me ask you what I'm going to do at this point. Um, this this sounds like it was tracked on a um, actually I think this was tracked on a Slate VMS but with no mic modeling or anything like that so there's no additional like color on it this is just like plain Jane which isn't a bad thing at all but I want to hear a little bit of color on this um, maybe a little bit of tube so smoking on my dope smoking smoking on my dope I'll be in your city you can see how fast I go the people with me keep the real ones on the toes if you don't like me i'm not pressure keep the fake shit on the froze 
smoking on my dough, smoking, smoking on my dough. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Lie to people with me, keep the real ones on the toes. If you don't like me, I'm not pressure, keep the. Okay, so this did change the, the frequency response of her voice a little bit, but I did kind of hear a little bit of glue happen. It's probably just a little heavy right now. Probably bring a little bit, but I'm adding a, primarily tube harmonics, which are going to be second order harmonics, which normally make things sound warmer and fuzzier. Um, but I do like the way that it, her voice kind of glued together a bit more. Um, with that, I actually want to go ahead and actually give her a little bit more of a presence boost. Um, up here now because I really like what her what the what the bottom of her voice is doing and I really don't want to mess with it we could totally come in here and we could basically I could come in rather than boosting the top and we could kind of remove a little bit in here smoking on my dope smoking smoking on my dope I'll be in your city you can see how fast I go lot of people with me keep the real ones on the toes if you don't like me I'm not pressure keep so the other thing that I'm hearing is I still want a little bit more of this in here. So I don't know. Maybe we'll come over and move this over a little bit. Maybe just make this a little wider. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Lot the people with me, keep the real ones on the toes. Okay. That kind of works. Um, let's uh, let's see if we can take care of our S's real quick, because those are those are gonna kind of kill us. So. Well, I could reach for a de-esser plug-in. Once again, Neutron, I've got two compressors here. So I'm going to make it multi-band. I'm going to take one up. I know from watching the Spectrum that it's up here. It's like a higher whistle. So I'm going to put it up here. Um, something around 2 to 1. A lot of times I'll start with maybe like uh, 1 to 6. Um, 6 millisecond and 120 is a fantastic starting point um, for this. Um, I think I'll put this on an envelope detector. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Lot of people with me, keep the real ones on the toes. If you don't like me, I'm not pressure, keep the fake shit on the froze. Smoking on my dope. Okay, so these are very powerful S's. We're actually already, it's already turning these down by up to like 7 or 8 dB. Okay, that's a lot. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to raise our threshold just a little bit. Um, we're going to increase our ratio. And we're going to speed this up a bit because these S's are higher. And the higher frequencies that you have, the faster of an attack time in your compressor, you need to be able to catch it. High frequencies happen a lot faster than low frequencies. Okay. So let's kick this down to a one <laughs> and let's see what we can make happen. Okay, so we're getting there. The S's don't sound great though, so this is going to be one place where we do actually need to get a little surgical with rest. Let's see if we can EQ out a little bit of the whistle and then boost back a little bit of present. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Lot the people with me, keep the real ones on the toes. If you don't like me, I'm not pressure, keep the fake shit on the froze. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in. Okay, so her S moves. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, like this is this is real stuff that you that you start finding that you have issues with. So. Um, rather than using this compressor, um, we're going to use something that's a little bit more smart and situational dependent. We're going to use a transient shaper. Transient shapers are kind of cool. Um, typically, you know, in the past, they're used to add more smack to drums and things like that. But they're also really good at removing attack or smack from things. They're actually really cool to work on vocals as well. They don't have a threshold. They don't work exactly like compressors. They actually just track the signal. And when something quickly changes, they... They're like, oh, that was a big change. Oh, I should work on it then. Okay. So it's all about when things change is when they act. So it could be a soft sound that's like moving a bunch and it's going to act. It could be a loud sound, whereas a compressor will only work when you have the threshold set. Right. This just kind of is really intelligent. So that's how transient shapers work. So we're going to see if we can do something like that. Um, Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Lot of people with me, keep the real ones on the toes. If you don't like me, I'm not pressure, keep the fake shit on the froze. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. 
Okay. So that did a really, really good job on that. Um, uh, re just super duper useful um, um, for being able to kind of affect the character of a sound. Once again, how much attack versus sustain that it has. Um, not always the right thing to use on a... Uh, not always the right thing to use uh, for DSing a vocal, but goes a really long way for it. Um, um, you can also, this is one of those things that I will go back to rule number one, do no harm. You better be damn sure you know what you're doing with this because you are affecting the fundamental part of a sound, especially in a multi-band process like this. This is unnatural. Her S's are also kind of unnatural, so it works. <laughs> okay. Um, actually, I mean, but I mean, that can happen a lot. Um, on S's. Okay, so we got that happening. Awesome. Um, okay, now that we finally have that there, now I want to really give this a kick in the pants with some of the final, like, kind of um, compression. Um, and for a lot of vocals, once again, we want to leave detail, we want to lose, leave the illusion of excitement and dynamics, but we need to take all the dynamics out. Whenever we need to do that to a sound, we want a sound to sound like it still has life, but we've kind of killed it all. We've made sure that it has a very low dynamic range, difference between loud and soft, but give the impression that it does, is when we want to reach for something called parallel compression. In Neutron, these sliders right here, here, if this compressor is doing something, we don't hear any of it. Here, we hear all of it. Notice all of these are all the way up, so they're at 100%. We hear everything of what they're doing, okay? So for instance, take this transient shaper on RS. As I pull this down, I'm mixing in the original signal, so we don't hear all of what Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Glad to be okay? And the cool thing is that also goes for EQs as well, which is actually kind of cool. Like, if we wanted to, we can come in, we can do a big ass Ooh. boost up here. Yeah, yeah, you're like, oh. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can Okay, I see it. But it, you were expecting ear shatter, but it didn't go right there because I only mixed in a small amount of it. <laughs> You're like, please don't do that. <laughs> um, okay, so so we can come in and and I'm gonna do something that in general, like you typically wouldn't want to do on a vocal. I'm going to I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna hit this in more of like an, an old school like 1176 style limiter. Actually, yeah, let's do a three. It's like 12 o'clock. Yeah, we're going, we're going super fast on this. Yeah, check this out. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. We do some makeup gain here. We're hitting about eight to ten dB. So let's uh, let's pull this back here. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. Like that's just that's basically limited. That's just pegged, and you're like, that's no life left. Why would we do that? Well, because we're gonna only mix in a little bit of it. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Lot of people with me, keep the real ones on the toes. If you don't like me, I'm not pressure. Keep the fake shit on the phone. Okay, so we, we've got a little bit too much uh, like mids happening from her right now. When we did that, because we really just cr crunched it together, but you can hear that it's like she like isn't moving, but she still has a little bit of life. But that voice is her voice is big. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's loud right now, but her voice is big. Her voice is now big enough to compete with that track, okay? So, yeah, you're like, well, I would never want to just smash a vocal like that and hear all of it. It sounds bad, but a little bit of it mixed back in. Just make sure that when you're doing it, it's not harsh sounding, okay? Um, but this is a great technique to add sustain to the voice, okay? Like, make sure that the weight of the voice stays there, but it's still, but because we have the original that has a little bit more dynamic and has more life in it, we get to hear that while putting in more of like just the straight, just core of the sound. We made the core of her voice stronger, but still allowed the top end movement to, to remain, okay? That's what parallel compression is about. And a lot of times when you do that, you're going to find that you need to go back and tweak your EQ a little bit, okay? Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Lot of people with me, keep the real ones on the toes. If you don't like me, I'm not pressure, keep the fake shit on the froze. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll 
be in your city, you can see how fast I go Lot of people with me, keep the real ones on the toes If you don't like me, I'm not pressure, keep the fake shit on the foes Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go Lot of people with me So, I still want to hear her voice open up a little bit more in the top mids here, okay? Still want to hear just a touch more from her Like actually from that range right there, okay? A lot of people immediately start reaching for the top and boost, 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 but the tone of a voice is going to primarily stop around 3,000 hertz, two to 3,000 hertz. After that, it's really just the consonants, the S's, the T's, the P, all of that. So we call the aspiration of the voice, okay? The actual core tone, the notes, are going to be down here. And so we, have, we know that we have good chest presence here, but I just want a little bit more from her here. And this is still what... We're trying to compress and push up with an EQ. Um, and I'm going to try to add some a little bit of distortion to the range. Once again, some harmonics, um, which is kind of like compression, but kind of like bringing up like the softer stuff in that regard. So for right now, I'd probably I would probably start with that. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Um So now that's a vocal that can fully compete with this, okay? So I'm gonna kind of skip ahead and start moving fast just because we kind of walk through the anatomy of actually a very difficult vocal. Um and right now you're like, yeah, that vocal's big. If you're gonna err on the side, err on the side of big vocals. People write songs and listen to songs because of the vocals, okay? And that's a tough lesson to learn, especially if you're someone that does more production. But at the end of the day, the end consumer cares about the voice more than anything else, okay? So always err on the side of the voice, um, especially because I know that we have a huge track here. So start bringing this back a little bit. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Lot of people with me, keep the real ones on the toes. If you don't like me, I'm not pressure, keep the fake shit on the foes. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. So this right here is a chart of where these, the vocal and the beat are conflicting. You saw when her S's went and mm. it shot up. I'm not going to worry about that. Her S's are going to dominate the beat there. That being said, I do want to kind of start bringing up the beat in presence. Smoking on my dopes. But before I do that, I need to understand this beat has been limited. Okay? Yeah. So I'm going to actually, I need to trim it back because I need some headroom because I don't want to start clipping all the time. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Lot of people with me, keep the real ones on the toes. If you don't like me, I'm not pressure, keep the fake shit on the foes. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Lot of people with me. Okay. Um, all right, so now we can start doing fun stuff like, like you said, you know, we wanted to hear a little bit of reverb. Okay, cool. Let's let's actually send into a little bit of reverb and kind of see what type of space we want it to be in. Big, small. Um, you know, reverb just for reverb sake doesn't necessarily do it. So let's see what we can actually make happen with a with a reverb. Actually, I'm gonna flip over and we're gonna use just good old stock deverb. Um, as awesome as other reverbs are, seriously. You should always be able to make D-verb work for you. Um, you've heard this on countless yes. albums. Yep. So, one of the first things for, for modern use of reverb, and a common common thing that I see people do, is they just pull up and they just... Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. And they just put it on, like, oh, great, it's reverb. Let me put it on the track, or I can't hear it, just turn up the reverb. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. 
All of a sudden, it sounds like she's at the bottom of a well or something like that. And I go back to, what are we trying to achieve with the reverb? Right. We're trying to achieve a larger sense of space for the vocal, okay? Um, we're also trying to achieve a sense of depth, okay? And right now when I listen to this, I'm, I'm just like, well, this sounds very boring. And the reason why this sounds very boring is because it's like I'm looking at something that's two-dimensional, okay? So you close your eyes and you think of a mix. Right now, we hear the low frequencies like at the bottom, we hear the high frequencies at the top, and then we hear stuff panned left to right, okay? That's how most people think of a mix. Well, that's, that's like only like two-thirds of it. The other part is depth. We need to think three-dimensionally about our mix. Don't just think of it like a box in front of us. Think about it as if it was a cube. It has depth to it, okay? This beat has no reverb on it. Everything is like right in your face. This beat is very boring to listen to. I think it's a cool beat, but it's been poorly put together from the standpoint of it's all 2D. And a lot of times beats are made like that because they want to have the max impact when they come on, um, which is why you get a track out, absolutely, you put a little bit of verb or delay on stuff like that. It still sounds like the beat producer's beat, but you get a bigger sense of space. You define the space that the song occupies. And right now, this song, everything's just like right here on us, okay? So when we talk about putting reverb on a vocal, we're not just doing it just to make it sound better. We're doing it to define space, add weight, depth, um, sometimes richness. Um, so, so in a song like this, um, we got to be really careful because we have lots of bass. We already have lots of sustained stuff happening. So if we put a long reverb on it, like it's just going to get really muddy. Like in your minds, like right now, just make one correlation. Reverb equals mud. Okay? Yeah. Be sparing, be selective when you use reverb, okay? So, in terms of using this, first off, if you're on a vocal, more often than not, you're going to use a hall or a plate verb. Okay? Plate is where you should probably be starting at. We can go into the histories of reverbs and what those actually are, but plates are probably where you want to start at. The other thing is, in a dense mix like this, I can't have the reverb right on my vocal, okay? I want my vocal to still be powerful and still kind of be present, but I want to hear reverb on it. So, actually, the easiest way to demonstrate this is probably actually going to be if I just, for right now, put it on the track so we can hear this. Um, so I'm going to put us to a plate. Um, typically, I'm just... I mean, once again, use, use your own judgment, but in general, you, you should have a real good reason for going over one and a half seconds of decay on a reverb. Once again, if it's a song that calls for it, that's a big verby or like a cloud track or something like that, absolutely. Like, do it. Like, but if like on just, on like typical like vocal reverbs on a modern dense mix, you should, you should probably not be going over that. You know, if it's an ad lib track that's supposed to, hey, and like, you know. Um, then yeah, absolutely do that. But that reverb may be different than the verb that you're putting on like the general vocals too. Um, so, so we have reverb. Okay, first off, sounds like she's in camp. Big part of that, high frequencies. We don't really need them. Okay, so we got that there. Now, the next thing is, I want to get some separation between her voice and the reverb. I want, in the mix, I want it to be like, oh, she has reverb on her. She's in a space. But I don't want it like, it's like right up on her. And it's like, no, just take a step back, man. Um, we do that with the pre-delay. It's like, a pre-delay is literally as if you put a delay before your reverb. So the reverb just happens to touch later. Um, great, great starting point for that. Probably going to be about 30 milliseconds. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Lot of people with me, keep the real ones on the toes. If like the voice, just like she kind of steps forward from the reverb, but you're like, oh, it's still there, but she just sounds a little cleaner. It has to do with uh, with psychoacoustics, how we perceive sound. Okay, um, um, but typically somewhere around that. This also goes for claps and other things as well. So. Smoking on my 
So what I'm actually thinking, because this track has such little spaces, we'll probably actually need to use two reverbs on it. Okay. So let's say I have my big, um, let's say I got my big stereo reverb. I'm just gonna put this up here for ease of use real quick. Um, and let's see, play. You know, I'm gonna put this up. Yeah, probably somewhere around here. I cut this down somewhat similar to that one, but then I'm also gonna put in. Um, I'm gonna put in a mono. Um, call this my mono verb track. So we'll say if it um, is, I'm gonna put in a really short, sloppy reverb like right behind her. Um, oops. Um, something like really short, really dark. Yeah, probably, I don't know, not that dark. Actually, it's probably something like that. I know the future. Um, okay, so let's listen to what that's actually doing. Russia keeps the fake shit on the phones. Smoking on my dough, smoking, smoking on my dough. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Lie to people with me, keep Okay, so right in the middle of the track, I just basically, you talked about like doubling the voice. I just basically did that with a reverb, okay? Um, it's darker and it's hitting like right behind her voice. So her voice does sound a little bit thicker, a little richer, not quite as naked. Um, it's a little bit up on her voice. Um, so, and this right here, this move right here, this blows a lot of people's minds. Um, which I think is kind of sad. Um, but... EQ your reverbs? I was finna ask you. Yeah, you EQ your re that, reverbs yeah. and reverb. Like, yeah. absolutely. It's another. It's like another track in the session. Why would you not? Yeah. Um, <laughs> smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on so, like, the chest part? I don't want that. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Okay, yeah. and now you just hear a little bit lighter. Her voice sounds a little bit lighter, which also kind of helps with kind of part of the playfulness of it. Okay. Um, yeah, and now I wanted to find some of the bigger space out and around. So now let's actually have like our big stereo reverb. Let's put some of that on. And probably something similar here. It doesn't sound like it's as big a deal for me down in the bottom of the chest, but up here, and maybe I want to push up on the sides, maybe a little bit more like that. But here, like, all of a sudden, I'm able to push this up to much higher because I'm using frequencies that that are being underserved or underused in the rest of the song, and I'm pushing my reverb into those to fill up that space. Okay, so it's also important because um, to a lot of times on lead vocals to use mono reverbs. Because if your track gets listened to on any type of public address system, all that big, beautiful stereo reverb, no one's going to hear it. It cancels out. Um, reverb, stereo reverb, and stereo effects, when you go back to mono, you lose all that. Um, if, you're at a, you know, if, if you're at a club or something like that, there's no stereo field there. You take the left and right channel, you mix them together, and they go out all the same speakers equally. It makes it louder and makes it more consistent. But have you ever heard tracks where you're just like, man, I can like that big synth that was supposed to be there isn't there, especially in any rock track. You're like, where's the wall of guitars? All I hear is the kick, bass, snare, and vocal. If you're at a bar and a rock track plays, like the guitars are just gone. You know, it's because that's the stuff that was super wide. Yeah. Like it just when you go back to mono, it cancels out. Okay, so and that's why it's really important to always be checking your stuff actually in mono. Okay, so. Um, so just to kind of wrap up on this real quick, the other thing that we can do to kind of put some motion and some space on this is we can start using delays. Um, and so we want to think about what we're doing with those, okay? Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. So smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. 
So uh, this is a main delay that we use, Imperial Delay by Boz Digital. Really cool. You can do lots of modulation, really cool stuff. Everything from super clean to distorted to you can use as an effects box, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, I just realized that when I pulled up this session, it did not have the tempo mapped in it. So let me do that real quick. So what I kind of want to hear to kind of go with kind of the, the playfulness of everything here is dun, 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 I want to kind of keep that rolling bouncy feel yeah. happening. So so I guess in this case that would be at 65 BPM it would probably be a quarter note. So. Okay, so here's the thing. If you just put a straight delay on everything, it's like, okay, cool, but now it just sounds yeah. muddy, okay? Yeah. So so the way that we should do this, if we want it to just happen on certain words, we just need to automate it. Fast way to do that in Pro Tools. Um, um, and so I brought up my send here. I hit Control Windows, um, so it would be uh, Control Command on Mac, but that brings up the automation lane. So like this, this right here, like check it out. So if I hit those two buttons on volume, I can see volume. If I hit those two buttons on this mute button, bing, all of a sudden you just have that. So I can literally grab it here with my mouse and I can And now I have a delay happening there because I just turned this send on. You watch, if you look at it, see how it's off and it'll turn on. Really cool. Even faster way to do it though, is I can take my track and I can use automation. I'm just gonna put it into touch mode, which means any time that I touch something on this track at all, it's gonna write. So check this out. Okay, so we have a little bit of motion happening on it. Um, let's see if we can do something. Let's maybe lo-fi the delay a little bit. Take myself out of touch automation. Another thing that a lot of people kind of neglect to do once again, and I'm not really sure why, is those delays that we just put on. Right now, those delays are right in our face. We want them to be falling away from us and be as Paul, we're trying to create this sound stage, this space. We should put some reverb on it. That reverb that we just spent time and thought creating, let's put reverb on those delays. Let's use the same one, okay? So. So now I kind of hit, but they're kind of a little bit further back. We're continuing to kind of took this, which is very 2D and flat, and we're slowly making it more three-dimensional, okay? Um, so once again, we still haven't even gotten into, oh, we should double this word or put chorus or something like that on that yet. We're just working within exactly what we have and taking it as far as we can go before we start having to be like, okay, what do we do to this, okay? So the thing is, if I didn't have the artist in front of me, I'll be honest with you, and I don't have any specific instruction, I'm not gonna do anything more than that right there, okay? Because again, starting to do anything more than this right here, we're like, okay, cool, we're gonna put like chorus on this word, we're gonna double this, we're gonna screw this word down. All that stuff is super cool, but if the artist listens to their performance and that is the, f and them hearing it is the first time they have any inclination that stuff's gonna happen, you are gonna be getting one angry phone call. <laughs> they would be, what did you do? Even if they listen to it six months later, they're like, yo, that's actually really dope. If they were not ready for it and didn't ask for it, they will hate it. So if I don't have the artist in front of me and I can't get a hold of them, I'm not going any further than this. Okay. Um, and that's just that's part of being in business versus just kind of doing work. 
Which is why, honestly, like here at Parent Studios, we really dislike working on people's stuff when they aren't here. Because a lot of times you're mixing, you do have creative ideas and inspiration, and you want to be able to talk to the artist and be like, hey, have you ever thought about this? Or I kind of feel this here. What do you think? And it's much more collaborative. Um, you know, if the artist is sitting next to you while you're working, like, absolutely, that's great. They should be a part of it. And even when they say something like, man, that, man, that just feels too blue. And you're just like, what does that mean? It's okay, take your ego out of it and talk to them. Because a lot of times they may be hearing something or perceiving something in a way that you aren't. Because a lot of times you're so in it, in the weeds, that you are missing the forest for the trees. Okay? You're looking at all these little details and you forgot to step back and be like, wait, what we or what is what we're doing actually better? You know, so like even these delays and reverbs. Smoking on my dope, smoking, smoking on my dope. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. So yes, I think that's definitely an improvement, okay? So yeah, we also probably want to do something on this. You know, if we want to, like, I would probably also recommend that we do some amount of, like, stereoizing type, like, flange, chorus, something, just to add a little bit more richness and shimmer to the voice. Um, actually, I'm going to use uh, Neutron 2. Also, you can put in as a mono to stereo in instance. And it actually has a pretty decent stereoizer, not fully mono compatible, um, but we can do something like that. Um, I may go ahead and do something like just actually turn up a bunch of this distortion on stuff. Um, probably like really narrow this in. Let's try something like that. I may also turn the limiter on. <laughs> I kind of maybe crush this. This is probably gonna have to be a little brighter actually. Um, and you know, and then maybe we'll start by putting like some form of modulation. Chorus, flange, phaser, I mean, I don't know, something. Um sci-fi. Um and this is where you literally just get to start start playing, you know? And it's just say, oh what what is this horrible thing that we've just Maybe we start then taking that and just putting that only on certain words. I'm sitting right here in the stereo field, and what I hear is we have the lead vocal here, and then this is like this thicker like thing that's like off to the sides. So we can do that to all of a sudden start adding weight to certain words or things like that. That might be something that you can kind of get away with if you kind of tuck it back in the mix. But once again, because as I listen to this, I'm like, I want to keep that dun 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 dun. Like we want to lean on those words more. Everyone's like, hey, did she at least double those words? Because that's what we want to feel more. So those are types of things that we can do that would probably be a little bit more like, be able to fly under the radar and kind of help out the feel of that. Um, all right, I want to take I want to take like five minutes and then come back and then we're gonna run through we're gonna run through uh, some some male hip hop vocals and we're gonna pretty much blaze through these. So take five minutes, refresh the coffee, and then kind of run through these. But small, precise moves that go a long way. The the trick is 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 doing all of that and and doing all of that in about ten minutes rather than an hour and fifteen minutes. Yeah. It's just it's a lot slower when you're explaining your every thought process. <laughs>
right, so, so we see the amount of time that it takes. If you're actually like thinking through every decision that you make, you're trying to like do this and like, and, and ideally, that's what you should do. Like in a perfect world, you should be spending hours mixing even a simple song. Like you really should, yeah. okay? That's what it takes. Do we ever get that amount of time? No. Pretty much never, okay? <laughs> so, so establishing workflows, templates are really important. And I, 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 it's really beyond me, but a lot of people like regard that as such a terrible thing. You know, it gives everybody the same sound. No, no, it doesn't. That's, that's on the artist and the engineer. Um, it's about enabling fast, creative workflows, okay? So, so with all the time we spent doing all of this, I'm going to come down here. We're just going to skip down to these vocals. Once again, I'm going to put in neutrons. And on these, I'm going to put in um, what, um, what actually what we typically use here as our like starting point um, for vocals. Okay? A um, couple things, once again, walking real quick around Neutron 2. You see we're in zero latency mode. So we can literally be recording through these. It incurs no additional latency. You do have to have fairly powerful computers because we get a lot of stuff happening. I'll actually walk you through this. Um, we've got a compressor. We first go into a three-band compressor. Actually set to hard limits at various attack and release settings with an automatic makeup game and automatic release. This helps balance out any huge bursts of energy in three typical ranges of vocals. It helps balance them out, but make sure that each range maintains the same amount of energy that entered the channel strip. That's really wordy. What it means is it controls it in a very transparent way that if let's say you have a singer, they're really soft at one point and they're really loud later, it responds and increases the level as it does it, but still controls their in each individual ranges. Super cool. We have an EQ by default. We got an 80 hertz high pass and we also have a low pass up here. Cause you know what? We spent a lot of time working over MP3s. That audio up there, you don't need it. There's no, there's no big information for a vocal up there, especially if you're working over MP3s. You also notice that this first compressor is probably only about 90% in. We still have some original vocal. Then we go through another compressor. This one's wideband. This one's set up to an 8 to 1, 10 millisecond attack, 75 release, some additional um, automatic, so Neutron will kind of move the release time. Um, and once again, this one, not all the way. So we basically have a limiter then. Then we go into a little bit of transient shaping for a little bit of DSing and presence boosting um, for consonants and for clarity up here. Um, then we have a gate, which is about 95% of the way in. And then last, we go into some harmonic excitement, adding third order harmonics to things, and then rolling off the top a, a little to help with any um, distortion buildup from harmonic excitement. So what something like this allows us to do, and the reason why something like this is really important. He got the wheel, I got the cheese, I do it right. Once again, these were recorded in a very, um, these yeah. were recorded in a green room at the backstage of a show. Um, all, all of these vocals. Um, he got the wheel, I got the cheese. Okay, so that's where we start from. Let's see what this He got the wheel, I got the cheese. I do it right so that no one can see. What's in my bag, you're running from police. I, I also have a safety limiter over here. I'm going to take this out of zero latency because everything just sounds a little better. works a little better. He got the wheel, I got the cheese. I do it right so that no one can see. What's in my bag, you're running from police. I keep it still like it's in custody. Off of the paper picking money trees. I am the water, music is a seat. They on the ass, so we take up the speed. We run in lights, hope you use the safety. You can use lots of bleed in the background. Yeah. So like I said, so, anyway, so let's let's put this. He got the wheel, I got the cheese. I do it right so that no one can see. What's in my bag, you're running from police. I keep it still like it's in custody. Off of the paper. Okay, so I'm having that same issue with the S's, so I'm gonna kind of do something similar I did pre- On the ass, so we take up the speed. We run in lights, hope you use the safety. I go. Lower when I got a charge, solar on my space kitchen. Mama smile, watch me as I'm floating, giving knowledge. If you know it, please just follow. Don't lose focus, they gon' chase us till we dead and gone. You know my life is potent, yeah, you know. Smoking me. on my top, smoking, smoking on my top. You can really hear the other vocal, like, really jumped out and sounds nice and natural. But, um, but once again, we're just kind of, we're just kind of working through these really fast. Actually, we only get to the male stuff, to be honest. With you. Um, But even that, you're just like, oh, that's just basically controlled and put her together and we're basically just working. So find jumping off points, understand how they work. Different people work differently, for sure. Um, but yeah. 
I'm smoking on that duo. My flow be clean like so. If you feeling froggy, then go ahead and crawl. Oh, drown in my way, but learn how to float. I keep a wet like I flip the boat. All this grass, you know I'm the goat. Two hands on your throat, cause this make you choke. I'ma teach the game, you just take notes. All white, like the Pope. Then the drip tied out, cause it's hippie dope. You know this hippie is trippy. I'm, I'm on my toes, yeah, them tippies. You, you know I'm stuck off the sticky. My Mary Jane stay pretty. My Mary Jane stay with me and I'm... Mid range presence. My flow be clean like so. If you feeling. My flow be clean like so. If you feeling froggy, then go ahead and crawl. Ribbit. Okay, we got ad libs. Then it's the minutes. It's dope. Like so. So that's kind of probably going to want to throw out a little bit of the bottom. Then it's the minutes. It's dope. It's dope, like so. Then it's the minutes. It's dope, like so. Cool. Uh, let's go get some. Actually, for these, I want to kind of glue them together a little bit because it's not just a single voice. So let's just call this as a verse two bus. Put both of these into a bus, and uh, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff that I can use here, but just for solidarity's sake. Oh, wait, oh, should I put that as a no? No, I want to stare you, please. push up so we're not full phone line but we have a little bit of presence cut through right there um, and then what I'll probably do is is just I want to do just a touch of glue compression on them and really I'm looking to glue them in that top mid presence range more than anything else because that's where we're going to be more sensitive to frequencies at so let's see I'm going to kind of do something where I kind of raise up presence just a little bit in this range here Probably go with like a really light compressor, maybe a bit of a knee too. Um, yeah, probably go three. Then it's the minutes. I'm smoking on that dog. It's oh, dope. my flow be clean like so. Like so. Oh, if you feeling froggy, then go ahead and crawl. Oh, Ribbit. Drown in my way, but learn how to flow. I keep a wet like I flip the boat. Ribbit. All this grass, you know, I'm the goat. Two hands on your throat, cause this make your choke. <laughs> I'ma teach the game, you just take notes, all white, like the pole, then the drip tied out cause it's hippie dope. Okay. Now, I can do this on the original tracks or not, but once again, just because there's there's a little bit of moving on and off the microphone, um, which is why the tone of the voice is changing a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna engage some parallel compression. I could go in and individually and EQ stuff or do parallel compression on individual voice tracks, but we're in right now we're in get it done mode. So I, I kind of glued a little bit, but now I want to like really bring up the sustain and make this like really uh, basically not move anymore. So uh, I'm probably going to do something like that right there. And I want to make sure that I'm getting a more consistent attack on the voice. So I'm not going to go with that really fast attack time. Um, let's go probably like a three. So with like a 50 release. Uh, so let's hear what we're actually doing. So the thing is, I listened to that. We took out too much life. But I really like the consistency, and I'm starting to hear like the attack of the voice be more consistent. Um, because we're going to go parallel on this, I'm actually going to slow it down a little bit. Let's go back to maybe six. 
Then it's the menace. I'm smoking on that dog. It's oh, my flow be clean like so. Like so. If you feeling froggy. You're the froggy. So oh, we're hearing a more consistent shape on those. Okay. That's kind of what I'm looking for. But I don't want all of that. I just want a little bit of it. So. Then it's the menace. I'm smoking on that dog. It's oh, my flow be clean like so. Like so. If you feeling froggy, then go ahead and crawl. Oh. Ribbit. Drown in my way, but learn how to flow. Burn. I keep it wet like I flip the boat. Ribbit. All this grass, you know I'm the goat. Two hands on your throat, cause this make you choke. Yeah. I'ma teach the game, you just take notes. All white, like, like the pole. pole. Okay, cool. Um, and I want to get just a little bit more essing, a little bit more present. Then it's the menace. I'm smoking on that dog. Oh, no. My flow be clean like so. Like so. Oh. If you feeling froggy, then go ahead and crawl. Oh. Ribbit. Drown in my way, but learn how to flow. Burn. I keep it wet like I flip the boat. Ribbit. All this grass, you know I'm the goat. Two hands on your throat, cause this make you choke. Yeah. I'ma teach the game, you just take notes. Cool. So, in terms of just quickly controlling something, I'm I'm good to kind of move on from there and then kind of see how we're gonna glue everything together. I'm trying not to kill the nigga. Right, so we got this guy now. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna start from the exact same spot, and these all have basically the same general issues and problems with them. Right. A lot of it is we are losing a lot of presence because of all the noise reduction that's been run on these already in the editing of them. So they're all kind of have this kind of smooth, phasey, fuzzy sound to mm -hmm. them. Um, so let's, yeah, let's start with our mixtape box. Let's see what that just did. I'm trying not to kill a nook, but if they push me to the edge, I might spill a nook. Okay, we immediately heard it was his voice, it's just more forward, but now it's controlled and it just stays there. So, right off the bat, we need more brilliance from the voice, okay? Um, it just sounds like nobody was right on the mic, and part of this is also the noise reduction dulling everything. Trying not to kill a nook, but if they push me to the edge, I might spill a nook. So when someone's shouting, they're normally already naturally compressed, okay? Because <laughs> you're just like loud. So we don't need a lot to worry about a lot of compression and dynamic control there, but as we bring up the brightness, we got to be really concerned about the natural distortion in yeah. the voice, and you start to hear that edge. So we need to be really aggressive on that. I'm trying not to kill a nook. But if they push me to the edge, I might spill a nigga. Hey, if I said it, then I meant it, nigga. I'm not sugar-coated shit. This ain't sweet, nigga. Hey, she, 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 she a bust down. Shooting at them niggas, I'ma send some rounds. Hey, riding with that pack, yeah. See me pack. Hey, I just pop a pill, feel like triple X. Hey, about to light that smack down, triple X. Hey, I'm just flexing on my fucking X. Hey, she's a bitch, she's a fucking pest. Okay. I'm also gonna use a little bit of distortion <laughs> to help smooth out. I'm trying not to kill a nigga, but if they push me to the edge, I might spill a nigga. Hey, if I said it, then I meant it, nigga. I'm not sugar-coated shit, this ain't sweet, nigga. Hey, she a bust down. Shooting at them niggas, I'ma send some rounds. Hey, riding with that pack, yeah, send me pack. Hey, ba bad bitch, give me top, she give me that. Hey, bad bitch, give me top, I need that. Hey, poppin' prep, poppin' prep and set. Okay, so we actually have a really brilliant S going on. So we've actually shaped the top of his voice, the part that was getting really edgy. I actually kind of, I actually added more distortion to, so that when those peaks of his voice hit, they actually kind of get distorted and kind of push down. That's actually mixed in wet dry. It's only about 60% in. So we still have the original vocal there, but it's enough that it's not fully hitting in. Um, so this is kind of, it's, you can kind of use distortion to kind of hide distortion. Um, also, the fact that he's shouting means that if you hear a little bit of gravel and, and grit on it, like that's actually kind of okay. That may actually kind of add to the performance, so I'm not super concerned about that. Um, we may be focused a little too much here. We only have a little bit of body, so that's just because I've pushed a lot of distortion on this part of his voice. So, I'm going to come down here. I'm trying not to kill a nook, but if they push me to the edge, I might spill a nook. Hey. You can hear it starting to ball up right there a little bit too much on the I'm trying not to kill a nook, 
But if they push me to the edge, I might spill a nigga. Hey, if I said it, then I meant it, nigga. Okay. So we're nice and big right there on the bottom. Um, yeah, unfortunately, this is right now running last in our chain, so I really like what this is doing. So I can move it earlier and EQ out the bottom, but the mid range would change, so I'm gonna kind of leave it there and kind of work with it probably a little bit more on the bus. Once again, this is just just trying to run through uh, you know the amount of time that we have. Ad libs, a normal like starting from similar settings. Um, um, one of the other things I love in this is put this into your vintage, your Pultec low shelf. Um, this is modeled after an old Pultec style curves. I can pull down here and push up on the mids at the same time to get just a little bit more of that brighter phone liners type. Hey, if I said it. Just kind of naturally pushes the same sound up into it, which is really cool. Because um, then you can just put some verbs and delays on it and basically be done. Let's go ahead and take this into a bus. Let's call this third verse bus. Um, no, I would like you to be a stereo ox track. Thank you all. Um, Alright, and you know, I'm just going to start from a similar place over here as this. For the sake of time, except I'm going to kill all that. Compressor. Let's check out our bus compressor first. I'm not the killer, nigga. But if they push me to the edge, I might spill a nigga. Spill a nigga. Hey, if I said it, then I meant it, nigga. Meant it, nigga. I'm not sugar-coated shit. This ain't sweet, nigga. This not sweet. Okay, so the part of his voice that was kind of like jumping out and hitting my ear, I just focused the compressor at that point right there in the side chain. Played around with the ratio. It's a one and a half ratio, three millisecond attack, 100 millisecond release. And just, I'm like, oh, this just kind of smoothed out. Now the ad libs kind of sitting in there as well. I'm trying not to kill a nigga, but if they push me to the edge, I might spill a nigga. Let's listen to that without the bus compressor. I'm trying not to kill a nigga, but if they push me to the edge, I might spill a nigga. Especially on edge and spill, like you really hear those jump out. We can just control it with this. Edge, I might spill a nigga. Spill a nigga. Hey. You know, it's like maybe 2 dB down on that. I mean, I know it looks like a little bit, but if we look at this scale up here, you can zoom in on the scale. To the edge, I might spill a nigga. Spill a nigga. Hey, if I said it, then I meant it, nigga. Me Actually, no. The most that hits is a decibel and a half. That's really what you should be doing in your bus compression. It's just about gluing and just rounding things off. And it's especially useful if you have, you know, a, um, if you have a, um, you know, ad-libs are things that you, that are a slightly different tone, but you have to find the common point. What frequencies do I want them to, to like, be the same at? And that's what your bus compressor is about doing, both on a mix as a whole and then also on, like, individual vocal buses. Um, it's just, uh, think of them as your polish compressor, okay? Um, I feel like he's already pretty forward. <laughs> I don't really feel like we need to do any parallel compression. Um, if we wanted to, we could try to bring up, let's say, the bottom of of his voice. <sighs> Probably don't need to. Um, to kill a nigga, but if they push me to the edge, I might spill a nigga. Spill a nigga. Hey, if I said it, then I meant it, nigga. Meant it, nigga. I'm like, do you hear what happened right there? As we heard, like his chest just kind of got more consistent and forward. I'm trying not to kill a nigga, but if they push me to the edge, I might spill a nigga. Spill a nigga. Hey. If I said it, then I meant it, nigga. Me Here, the bottom of his voice just kind of sits and stays. Maybe I want that, maybe I don't. But rather than EQing down the mids of his voice when there were parts that were popping out, and rather than just going into everything and pulling up, by using compressors and parallel and side chaining the EQs to it, that's actually how you achieve the result, okay? Um, it's going to be a little bit more natural than gripping and ripping EQs, okay? Because really, we're just turning it up and down based off parts of what's already there. Um, when done right, it sounds more natural, and really compression is the sound, is the sound of modern music. But you can totally control the tone of something by using your compressors. So, so... That's big, what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Alright, so then let's say we go in and... Let's say I want to get... Let's get some, uh... I'm trying not to kill a nigga. But if they push me to the edge, I might spill a nigga. 
spill it, nigga. Hey, hey, if I said it, then I meant it, nigga. Meant it, nigga. I'm not sugar coated shit. This ain't sweet, nigga. This not sweet, nigga. Hey, she, 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 she uh, bust down. Bust down. Shoot it at them, nigga. But because that delay has a little bit of verb on it, it actually kind of sits in there kind of nice. Um, the delay itself, though, I hear it. Um, oh, wait, was the eight delay up here? Yeah, I want to take this and I want to I want to do just a little bit of EQ on it to kind of keep it out of the way of the voice. Um, cool thing that I can do with this, I'll put this in as a stereo instance, um, is I can um, I can use this EQ to also um, duck things. So I'm going to take my key input and let's say I just put some bus and I say bus 20. I'm going to take this verse bus and I'm just going to put a send down here on the bottom bus 20. And up. All right, so then I'm going to take this band right here. Turn on. These are dyna dynamic bands. They're kind of like compressors or expanders. They'll go up or down. I'm trying not to I'm trying not to kill it. If they push me to the edge, I'm a Oh, that's using bus 20. Let's not use bus 20. Let's use bus 23. It's like, man, why is that happening? All right, so check this out. I'm trying not to kill a nigga. So, yeah, so we have that delay going there. But I can take this and be like, hey, let's listen to the external channel. So now I can turn up my delay, and anytime that vocal's going, it's going to turn the delay down. I'm not the killer, Nick. But if they push me to the edge, I might spill a nigga. Spill a nigga. Hey, if I said it, then I meant it, nigga. Meant it, nigga. I'm not sugar coated shit. This ain't sweet, nigga. This not sweet, nigga. Hey. She a bust down, bust down, shooting at them niggas. I'm a system right. So if I want to have like a really busy delay, like it's there the whole time, but you only really hear it when the voice isn't there, but it's cutting itself out the rest of the time. What's in? If you have time, go through and automate your delays. Right now, I'm in speed mode. So I'm like, hey, yeah. like I got to get this down. I can use automation when I got time. Right now, I'm going to use compressors to do the work for me. Okay. If they push me to the edge, I might spill a nigga. Spill a nigga. Hey, if I said it. Okay. And in this case, let's say I want like a really big reverb on um on let's say these ad libs. If if I have time, I'm gonna absolutely put an, an aux in and put it on. In this case, I want that verb to glue against his voice. So I'm gonna actually put. I'm gonna do like one of the no nos. One of the rules that you break. I'm actually just gonna put a verb right on the track. Deverb it up, give it a whole big pre-delay, because I want that reverb to be able to have some tail, but when his voice starts going, I want it to glue with his original voice a little bit. Okay, so I, so the reverb will kind of push down. Let's listen to just the, re, uh, just the ad. Spill it, nigga. Mim it, nigga. This is not sweet, nigga. We still also have the other uh, that other delay going on there, but basically now we have a big long verb. To the edge, I might spill a nigga. Spill a nigga. Hey, if I said it, then I meant it, nigga. Meant it, nigga. I'm not sugar coated shit. This ain't sweet, nigga. Not sweet. Hey. The verb is probably not going to be clean enough for uh, for ad libs. To be honest with you, it's got a lot of modulation, so it moves a lot. And for stuff in the back, you want like a really clean verb. Uh, I'd probably recommend flipping over and using one of the um, the air reverbs. They also come with Pro Tools, um, but. The edge, I might spill a nigga. Spill a nigga. Hey, if I said it, then I meant it, nigga. Meant it, nigga. I'm not sugar coated shit. This ain't sweet, nigga. This not sweet. Nigga. Hey, she, 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 she a bust down. Bust down. Shooting at, at them niggas. I'm spill a nigga. Spill a nigga. Hey. If I said it, then I meant it, nigga. Meant it, nigga. I'm not sugar coated shit. This ain't sweet, nigga. This not sweet, nigga. Hey. She, 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 she a bust down. Bust down. Shooting at them niggas. I'ma send some round. I'ma send some round. Hey, ride it right that back. Yeah. Okay. So, so we got a reverb there. It's kind of bright. So, probably want to actually turn some of that down on it. We're basically, putting some pre delay on it to get it to kind of fire a little bit. If I said it, then I 
I'm minute, nigga. Minute. I'm not sugar coated shit. This ain't sweet, nigga. This not sweet. Hey. She a bust down. When you hit something like that, you probably want to take, let's say, the reverb send that's on the, that's on like the bus track that all this is running through right here. <coughs> let's kill that. Just keeps, makes the vocal just pop a little bit more and then just sit back into the track a little bit, which kind of puts a little bit of movement on it. So don't be afraid to turn on and off your reverbs at time to when you want something to be two dimensional, let it be that, let it pop forward that little right. bit. That movement, that stylized movement, is also what people won't even realize it, but they just listen to it and they're like, ooh, that's really nice, you know? Um, so, I'll put the same Bus 23 send in up here on this one. Okay, so let's say we have all this going on. Okay, and now we need to actually, because this beat, once again, has no dynamic range, so it still just sounds like our vocals are just on top of the beat, because there's no space to put them into it. So we need to think about all the EQ points and where we've been really focusing our energy in the beat has all been like in this area here. So like me, I'm not pressure, keep the fake shit on the floor. Smoking on my door, smoke is smoking on my door. I'll be in your city, you can see how fast I go. Lie to people with me, keep the real ones on the toes. If you don't like me, I'm not pressure, keep the fake shit on the floor. Smoking on my door. actually touch this yet so let's see what we can do she sounds like she's close enough that we can probably get away with using an automatic auto tune on this let's get the same settings here running let's get a similar reverbs here smoking on my dough ah because she's kind of singing at half time we can probably put in a quarter note of delay smoking on my dough yeah letting it go yeah, I'm about to blow. Yeah, get it through your soul. It looks like they did give us a nice preverb to kind of suck into this. That's, that's cool. It's kind of a good starting point. Um, preverbs are normally cool if we get a little bit more movement on them. So um, let's put a let's put a phaser on it. Let's put that down to about here. Cool. And let's put a big reverb on the preverb. Smoking on my dough. Yeah, letting it go snow. Yeah, I'm about to blow. Yeah, get it through your soul. Okay. So part of the thing is I'm hearing, as I'm sitting here in the stereo field, the other thing that's making this seem just kind of weird is right now this this track is actually very monocentric, okay? And this is another issue that you come into with a lot of two-track beats. And that is that it's so here that when you pan your vocals, you get reverbs happening. They're all outside of the beat, right? Um, this, is a, this is a place, this is another reason why I highly recommend investing in the, the bundle of Neutron 2 and Ozone 8 advanced specifically because you can also use the individual modules without having to load the full one um, um so like here's the imager so i want to just kind of listen and i can do multi-band so I'm at the same time your bass down here you need to make sure that's mono <laughs> don't don't make bass stereo We'll talk more about that next week, but please don't make bass stereo. You make people vomit, puke, and your track won't be able to be as loud as it should. <laughs> My bag, you're running from police. I keep it still like it's in custody. Off of the paper, picking money trees. I am the water music. is smoking on my door. Smoking, smoking on my door. I'll be in your city. You can see how fast I go. Lie the people with me. Keep the real ones on the Don't like me, I'm not
quick over here. So we need to do something fast on this to the beat. I'm going to put in a low pass filter up here at the top. I'm going to come over here and, uh, oops, turn back on, do that, thank you. I'm going to do what we call three fingers delete, control, windows, and alt, or control, command, alt. And I'm going to, you're not doing that. That is interesting. Okay. I guess this session was solo saved. All right, well, I am going to instead, I'm just going to turn on this lane. Automation, just turn everything on. I'm not sure why. Let me do it this way. That's okay. Typically, you can just turn that right on. But, um, yeah, you're not registering anything. Wow. That really blows. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come down here. Uh, you do three, three fingers uh, on all your three modifier keys and click a parameter, and that should turn on the automation lane for you. Yes. Um, you still got to pick those, like... And you, you, you select, you, it, you click it, on the parameter that you right. want to do, yeah. So I'm going to just use this real quick. Let me show you this last little thing because this is super useful. <clears throat> but put, your, put yourself in a low pass. Let's see if this one will do it. Hey, there we go. Enable frequency automation. Check this out. So now I'm going to take this. Yeah, because that happens right there. So we're just going to... Maybe we have it start to come back up. I'm about to blow. Yeah, hit it through your soul. Then it's the minister. I'm smoking on that dog. Oh, my flow be clean like salt. Like salt. Oh, if you feeling froggy, then go ahead and crawl. Oh, Drown in my way but learn how to flow. I keep away like I'm flipping the boat. So you're after expanding that beat outside the vocal and getting those mids up, all of a sudden you're like, holy crap, it's like around the voice. My flow be clean like salt. You know, I'm the go-to, hands on your throat, cause this make you choke yeah. I'ma teach the game, you just take notes All white, like, like the pole. pole Then the drip tied cause it's hippie dope You know this hippie is trippy I'm, I'm on my toes, get yeah, them tippy Okay, so then we've made a hole for that, we've got that up <clears throat> Then we should probably do some amount If you're just finishing, just like a mix Maybe you do, maybe we go back And we're gonna do just a touch of bus compression again and Once again, I you start probably with like a 2 to 1 ratio um, a lot of times, and working on this stuff, I want to use like a 65 or so attack, maybe like a 30 release, something that's actually really fast. Um, I probably don't want it focusing on the sub content. Probably want it focusing a little bit more on the mid range and the high. So let's cut out a little bit of that bottom. Shooting at them niggas, I'm a system So just a little bit, no, I'm just tapping on those peaks just a little bit. You can hear that I'm actually adding punch to the track, but controlling the kick drum so I can get it louder at the same time. Listen and pay attention to the kick. Hit. I'm smoking on that dog. Oh, my flow be clean like salt. Like so. If you feeling froggy, then go ahead and crawl. Oh. Drown in my way, but learn how to flow. I keep away like I flip the boat. All this grass, you know I'm the go to. Hands on your throat, cause this make you choke. I'ma teach the game, you just take notes. All white, like the pole. That's basically what you're looking to do with that. If I really wanted to, I can even master through this, so I'm just gonna. I'm smoking on that dog. Oh, my flow be clean like salt. Oh, like salt. If you feeling froggy, then go ahead and crawl. Oh, Drown in my way, but learn how to flow. I keep away like I flip the boat. All this grass.
you know I'm the go-to Hands on your throat, cause this make your choke yeah. I'ma teach the game, you just take notes All white, like, like the, the pole. pole Then the drip tie cause this hippie dope You know this hippie this actually is based it's so low that it's kind of outside this curve, but that's about right. You can kind of see how it goes. They didn't really think that people would be working with subs that were at like 30 hertz or 20 hertz. Yeah. Um, but that's going to be about right there. So the last thing would be like, cool, how loud, how loud do we want to make this? You know, we're going to talk a lot about this next. I mean, I'm literally just pushing this into a limiter right now. But honestly, if you have a good mix going, that's all you should really have to do. The thing is, is right there, we're actually only about two and a half, three dB off of like old CD volume or loudness. That right there is right in the ballpark of actually the loudest that you want to push for streaming platforms. Um, so you actually need those dynamics and we don't want to crush them out. Because um, that's when you make stuff too loud, it sounds like crap on your phone, you know? Because um, your phone's kind of compressed the sound too anyway. So yeah. I would probably go from there, but that's really what you have to do. So you push it up and then you kind of start listening. Then go back through your mix. Go back through your mix and listen. And be like, do I like this? Do I not like this? Okay. What parts work? What parts don't work? Okay. And the thing is, big bass and just letting the vocals kind of just have their natural bounce to them. You get the track out and around it. But it's not... Don't try to make the people sound like or do things that they weren't originally doing. That's that's where you start from. But when you actually talk about approaching a mix, that right there is we, you should get a mix to about that point and then start going in and being like, cool, what other effects? Where are the places that the performances don't carry the song? Where does the energy, if I'm listening to this song, man, bar, bar seven of that second verse, like, eh, I just kind of start to lose interest a little bit. What can we do there? Okay, but if you don't have everything kind of set up and staged right, you can't really make those decisions yet. Because, so that's why I say, like, try to hold off on like the whole effect thing and doing the really cool creative stuff as long as you can. Because if you make just a better song or this, a better sound and make the performances work as well as they can for themselves, with just simple reverb, delay, compressors, and EQs, you're gonna make better and, and you're gonna make better decisions for the song and for the artist because you're actually hearing what's there. We've uncovered it. We've allowed what was there and the stuff that was good, we've allowed it to cut through. Now what needs to be made better? Okay, so that goes back to the holistic kind of approach of mixing to take. And I know that's not as nearly as exciting and fun as we just put this plug in and just go, but that's actually what the work is. And when you get something to this point and you listen to it, then you're able to start doing the fun stuff. And it's so much more fun because you put an effect in and you're not like, oh, I can hear it this time and not this time. You can hear it every time. Like, it just works. Because, yeah. you know, you, you ate your meat and potatoes. Yeah. So, so that's the, at least that's how we at Baron Studios approach mixing. Okay? So, anyways. Um, next week, we're going to actually talk more track finalization. Um, we'll be working on a different song, one that isn't nearly as compromised as this. With the tracked out beat and and uh, yeah. and uh, pretty fun, but um, um, but the other thing that you're gonna find is, dark most mix engineers they probably do their best work on songs that they don't particularly like because they don't have as much of an emotional investment, and so they make better decisions. If every single decision that you make while working on something is five percent better, that turns into a huge difference by the end of the song, okay? Because you make thousands of decisions, so. It's all about practicing making slightly better decisions at every juncture as you go through. And always keep in mind, am I hurting stuff? And what is important about this song? And am I, everything that I'm doing should be towards the goal of, of bringing those performances forward and letting them speak for themselves. That should be the goal, number one goal, okay? So we gotta, we gotta, we gotta wrap up and make room for other people, but if you have any questions, be up front. I don't know, depending on the weather, we may go over to Ladybirds. Probably. Here's always nice in the afternoon. I know it's kind of crummy outside. But, uh, yeah, cool. Thanks for showing up, everybody, on this rainy Labor Day. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, next, next week we're going to be talking, um, actually mastering. Go. Cool.